you know, growing up being biracial and loving yourself. Can you explain to our listeners what you learned from that experience and what, what you can instill in them that can help them maybe get through that situation? I mean, you know, first let me say, you know, you know, God is my centerpiece. Um, you know, everything that I have is because of him. I look, like I said, I was a knucklehead and uh, he kept loving on me. He kept believing in me. Um, I had a guy in my life named Eugene Parker. Uh, he was a, uh, 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 what he was my, not my first agent, but he became my agent from my hometown, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And he would call me every day and say, Rod, you pick up that call? But he's talking about God. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, 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 I picked it up, but uh, I hung up after about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then, so, I mean, it's constantly. So it, this went on for years. And uh, I, mean, I always went to church uh, and did all that, but I was never living the life. I was never a, a true follower, not a believer, because people believe in Santa Claus, people believe in the Easter Bunny. I was a follower. I wasn't a follower on a daily basis. And then one day uh, he, he called me, I was in Baltimore, my second year, and he called me, he said, uh, yeah, you pick up that phone? I said, I did. It's still, I said, I, I got him on, I got him on, uh, Conference call, 365, 24-7. Yes, sir. That's good so stuff. it was like my second year in Baltimore when I really became a follower mm-hmm. of Christ. So that's that's that. And then being biracial, you know, was tough, but it it taught me what life was like early, right? Yes, so, you know, my dad's from the South. Mm-hmm. My dad's great-grandfather was a slave, mm-hmm. right? So his sisters had a little animosity toward European Americans, white people, which was my mother. My mother's a redheaded German. I mean, her maiden name is Dorflin. So that tell you how German she is. So, you know, so they had a little issue with her. Some of them had a little issue with us because we was half white. Mm-hmm. Now, her family's from the North. Mm-hmm. Now, some, some of her family had an issue with us because we were half black yes, and some of them didn't. So it, it, can, it really allowed me to grow up in an environment understanding that family is not always blood, mm-hmm. right? Family is not always what we see in our house every day, in our homes every day. Mm-hmm. Families are, are more than that. Um, and that's one thing I learned. Family is, is way more than, than being born into something. And that's where, that's when I understood the big picture where, you know, my brothers, my sisters, and I, you know, I love my two older brothers. Uh, We're very close. We talk all the time, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but, you know, understanding other family members, them like me just because. And I'm like, okay. And then once I, once I got a little older, then it really kind of hit me. Oh, that's why they didn't really like me. You know, I mean, when I was younger, I really didn't get a feel. My dad really wouldn't talk about it. I mean, we would go down to Tennessee in the early 70s, and it still would be colored and white mm-hmm. for the uh, for the water fountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's like, you know, so seeing that stuff, growing up in it, allowed me just to understand that, listen, my family members, we all don't look alike. And then what I always tell people all the time, people want us to choose, especially as a biracial kid. And I'm like, I'm not gonna choose. I am what I am. I'm best of both worlds. And I said, I'm best of both worlds. I have both worlds into me. And if I choose one to the other, then that's shunning the rest of my family on my dad's side, or that's shunning the other side of my family on my mother's side, which I would never do because some of my uncles, or really all my uncles and aunts on my mother's side, I love them. Uh, all the you know aunts and uncles on my not all of them but on my father's side we all got along and I loved all of them but one thing I did know I did know that one coat or one a couple people on my dad's side didn't like us because we was half white mm-hmm. some people on my mother's side didn't like it because we was half was half black and as I got older I had to make a decision do we stay there or do I keep or do I just move on and I just moved on. And I love my family members. I love because they are my family members. But at the end of the day, you know, they had to understand the bigger picture. Um, and then the same thing for, uh, you know, like my my wife, my wife, she's white. 
she's from the middle of Indiana. And, you know, her family, when they first saw me, they were like, oh, no, uh. <laughs> and she had to make a choice. That's right. All right, she had to make a choice. Is she going to be with me or is she going to satisfy them? And she came to me. And then the what I did to try to show them we're all the same. We all have different skin pigmentation. That's all it is. So I took the grandmother and the mom and dad to Hawaii with us for the Pro Bowl. And all my boys are, you know, are, you know, all my boys are really black. All the guys are really, really hang around on a daily basis. So hanging around all the guys on the, oh, we at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, and they seeing all us, all the kids play together. Um, and then they realize, oh, they all the same. Everybody the same. That's right. Mm -hmm. They all got the same issues. Different. Grandma start tripping. Mom stop tripping. Dad stop tripping. Aunt stop tripping. And they realize everybody's the same.